Hi all, uh, I'm Avneet and in this presentation I'm going to talk about a new feature which has been introduced in MDM 9.6 onwards where we have gone data independent, database independent. The new feature that I'm going to talk about is batch operations. So we've introduced a couple of APIs using which you can execute batch ops through the SIF layer. Why do we need to do that? Uh, the primary reason is all the procedures and packages have been deprecated. So if you have to execute a job through a scheduler or do you want, if you want to design your own workflow, you'll have to use these APIs to execute your batch jobs. Or of course, you could go into your hub console and you could execute a batch job from there. What we are additionally going to also going to talk about in this session is a sample code on how we can code this. We will also go through the uh, Java docs as a quick reference on what all APIs are available for you. So with uh, no further delays, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move into uh, my sample code. In here, what I've done is, uh, first of all, you could either use the resource kit to import a project, or you could create your own project. What you could do is, uh, you know, just right click here. You could say, new Java project, create your own standalone project, or if you have the resource kit with you, you could just say, you know, new, go to others, say Java project from an existing build file, navigate to your resource kit under samples you have a resource kit uh, an uh, a dummy sample for a clean table just import this build.xml and that will establish your workspace give you a startup point with with a sample a clean table sample as an example what i've done in this demo is i'm going to execute a match job so i've designed this uh, code to execute a batch job for uh, table c party for match rule set XYZ. And what you can see is what I'm doing in simply in here is uh, importing the, the request object, the response object. I have a utility class right here which gives returns back a Cypherian client using which I can process the request. And all I'm doing is I'm instantiating this class, I'm setting the parameters, the table name, which is a required parameter. And this is optional. So in, in a lot of cases, you have more than one rule sets, right? And you want to execute a different rule set depending on your use case. So if, if that's the case, then you can use this parameter to give the, the rule set name. And then all I do is get my Cyperian client and I do a process and I pass in the match object. In the response, I get the return code and I get the process XREF count. So this is an example which I already made. Let's say I want to process another job. I want to process a state job. Let's say, you know, you, you're giving me a table name. So before I execute this, the purpose of me creating this function right now on the uh, on the session itself is I want to go through the actual Java doc and show you how to actually you know go through the API and understand what needs to be done when you're actually coding this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the SIF APIs, and there I'm going to look at these examples. So these are API information. So you can see all these execute. These are all APIs available for our different batch jobs, load, group, generate, delete, even BVT has been introduced as a batch job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for stage right here. And if I go through the API, all it's asking me to do is, is basically saying that, you know, this is the required parameter that I need to do is set table name. And the table names needs to be a stage table name. Okay, 
so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and this table name is basically supposed to be all right and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, rather than writing it myself I'm just gonna take a shortcut copy this right here paste it when I import this class Then I'm going to take a response object and uh, I am going to instantiate my Cypedian client using this call. I'm going to add a cast to it and this way I've executed my stage request for the job that I needed that and then all I'm going to do is it's going to print the stats you know so what you can do is response get and if you see basically it's getting me the return code and it's also giving me the count of extras that have been processed. So I can print your return code right here and I can print so just with the small code that I wrote a small function right here you can see I'm actually executing a state job for a given stage table name now the advantages I just wanted to talk about was uh, you know in uh, older releases we, we were defining batch groups where we could execute multiple state jobs in parallel or load jobs in parallel right but what we could not do is that let's say you have a batch group and you have a parallel block of 10 stage tables and then you have another parallel block of another 10 stage tables so unless the first parallel block gets completed, the second parallel, parallel block could not get executed. So what we could do here is, using these APIs, we could actually create more dynamic workflows where I could spawn 10 threads and say, execute these 10 jobs, and as soon as one thread comes back, give it the next job to execute. So these are the advantages that we have. You know, we, could, we have more freedom to create the, the workflow that we want. And uh, that way is you could, you know, achieve, you know, you could basically uh, reduce down the processing time of a bad jobs by removing this limitation where, you know, you don't need to wait for, for the entire group to finish before executing the next batch group. All right. Uh, we can also briefly talk about, uh, you know, BVTs, right? This is one of the uh, procedures that is... Uh, executed in certain cases where we have certain sort of data corruptions so even here if I go into the execute batch recalculate BO request what you can see is uh, the required parameter again is the BO name and optional parameter is row ID object table this is the same table which is basically nothing but a temporary table which is having a column called row ID object which contains the list of all row IDs on which you want to execute the BVT procedure on so if I don't give this parameter then it would execute on the entire base object if I specify this table as well then it will only execute the request on the row IDs which are part of this table so we could just go in here say public void I'm just using to use void right now Let me 
just go ahead and uh, copy over the API name quickly. So here again, if you see, you have the set table name parameter where you set the table name. So let's say my table name was and this is a temporary table which I created, you know, for holding uh, a list of providers on which I want to run this. Let's see if we have any additional parameters that we can discuss quickly go through about. So these are the only uh, methods that are available to us besides the other uh, inherited methods. So now all I'm going to do is again Import the uh, response object. I have this class which I created. I'm going to import this, add the cast here. Now, with, after this command, my job has been executed. Once I have the response back, I'm going to print the information here. So this is a simple sample of executing the recalculate be your job in MDM 969619.7 and any future release where in previous releases we used to execute a stored proc but we don't have to do that anymore because we are deprecating that and we're moving to a api-based framework you know more on java database independent so this was the demo that i had for you guys where I've, you know in front of you i just created these three functions in which one of them i'm executing the match job in the second i'm executing a state job in a third demo i'm actually executing a recalculate your request job and if you need any further information you could always uh, download the the resource kit samples you, there's a SIF guide which gives you information about the APIs and you could also of course go through the Java doc which will be part of the uh, resource kit and uh, in these Java docs as we as we saw there's a lot of information about what all APIs are available and how you can execute those bad jobs uh, we would welcome your feedback. Thank you all.